we're interested in is how social norms can evolve from an initial state of nature in which no one knows anyone else and there's no real expectations for anyone else's behavior. So we can think, for example, about how to greet each other in a certain situation, or what types of words to use, or what types of language to use, what appropriate conduct is. These are all things that develop over time as people get more and more comfortable with each other's expectations for one another. So I partnered with a physicist, Andrea Baron Kelly, and he and I decided to build an online social network experiment in which we recruited hundreds of people and put them into online social networks with strangers. And basically allowed them to collectively produce a social norm. And we tried three different network structures. Um, one was really based on geographical patterns of settlement, so a geographical network in which people were laid out spatially. One was a small world network, so this is basically taking a geographical network and then introducing long ties or weak ties to it, which make uh, rapid communication across the space very, very easy. And then finally, we looked at the case of amorphous social structures where people can just kind of interact with one another without really any structural barriers whatsoever. And this to us parallels the situation online where anyone can make a tie to anyone else and interactions can be essentially at random. And our basic question was, if we give people an object to name and we let them independently suggest names, will they eventually figure out what names other people use and start using the same name? In the cases with geographical networks, people were able to coordinate locally with one another. However, what this produced was a series of competing groups, but there was no global consensus on what name would be used. We then looked at this process in a small world network. So we'd expect in the context of a diffusion process that that would change the dynamic of how fast or whether a collective norm might, might emerge. But in fact, we found that it didn't change anything. Then we let people just interact randomly with other people. And at the beginning of this process, no one could achieve any coordination. In fact, there was dramatic failure across the networks. And it looked like this wasn't going to work at all. But then suddenly, there was a radical shift in the dynamics. And the population spontaneously went from a completely disorganized state in which no one could agree with anyone to everyone using the same global convention. So what we're working on now is whether or not groups can control this process of norm formation. Uh, and so we think of this in terms of committed minorities. If there was a large population that had already agreed on the social norm, how small would that minority need to be in order to overturn the norm and change the population's attitudes to a new, uh, a new dominant belief? Mm -hmm.